and we saved almost the best for last, but definitely <laughs> the cutest for last. Um, this is a little bit different today because normally we don't get into too much of the detail of the financials. Um, we do that at our board meetings. But I felt that so many people are now watching this and it gives us a chance to be a little bit more specific. And a lot of people don't follow the board meetings. They're busy, they have other things to do. But they always ask how we're doing financially because obviously it's a concern because with the COVID, people don't know if we're staying open, we're closing, how the island is doing. You're hearing people going bankrupt. They can't open the doors. People are going home. So I figured the best thing to do is introduce you, where you've never met him, to our CFO, Thomas. And how are you? He, Thomas not only is our CFO, but he's only been with us a short time. Right, since January. Yes. And... Um, there's been so much that's been going on. When Thomas joined us, obviously we didn't know we were going to have this going on with the virus, but uh, he took us through the complete application process, took us through the PPE loans, got us the SBA, worked with us on it, does the audits with us, um, and he's just been an amazing partner and an amazing addition. And really, when I talk about a dream team, we have a dream team on this island. I mean, between Thomas and Robert and Steve and Stephanie and Dan and Carrie, I, the list goes on and on. But Thomas, I wanted today to talk a little bit and introduce the people to you first of all, mm -hmm. let them meet you, and then we'll talk shortly about um, how we're doing through today's date, because we've been asked a lot about how are we doing Will there be a need for an assessment? What's happening with the finances? How does the budgets look? So I think one of the wonderful things that we were able to accomplish uh, is obviously getting you here first and then going through the budgets and modifying what we had to make sure we could deal with this horrible disease. But before we even talk about it, tell us a little about you, because they don't know you yet. So no, introduce they yourself to us. Hello, uh, I'm Thomas Bertarelli. I've been in this business uh, over 30 years, so now I'm dating myself. And um, Do you get along with yourself? I do. I get along <laughs> with myself. I'm the best person to talk to myself and then get the answers back. Okay. But, uh, no, uh, I enjoy the hospitality portion of the business, uh, <coughs> therefore, I, and I love accounting, so the two go hand in hand. And I've always really basically stayed in this line of work. And when this opportunity arose, and I had met De uh, Deborah, and I met Steve, and I said, definitely, hopefully I'm going to be one of the candidates to be chosen to uh, join the team here. And I'm very happy I made that decision. Very happy. I'm very happy they made the decision. And we're happy we made it, too. And you're Thank a new neighbor. You just moved in right down the street for us, That's too. right. Now I literally can walk to work once uh -huh. my... Uh, my apartment goes under complete renovation. <laughs> but uh, Well, yes. one of the uh, wonderful things about Thomas, and I think this was a very big part of the fact that you're here and mm -hmm. that we're learning more about, is not only is Thomas financially very apt in what he's doing, but he has a lot of managerial skills. And he's been in management before, and he's been in construction development before, and he's handled finances for development and construction. And those three components are so important to what we're doing here on the island because we're going through, obviously, transitions mm -hmm. of construction-related items. We have managerial, obviously. We have Steve, but it's great to have someone that if somebody is sick, they go on vacation. We have additional management. And I think between you, Steve, and Deborah, we have a wonderful combination in the office. I think now. a very strong team. Yes, yeah. we really do. So let's just start a little bit with... Um, how are we doing on the island <clears throat> if we took us through year to date? Year to date, the, the island is very strong financially, uh, thank God. Our revenue, yes, our revenue outlets were closed at the beginning of the COVID virus. And slowly but surely, tennis being the first one to really open up and um, open up almost at 100% now they're open up so they have they're not they're actually exceeding last year's numbers food and beverage always had the delivery service and even till today the delivery service is a big aspect of the food and beverage and we they are doing very well they're about 70% of where they were last year it's amazing it is considering that uh, there's still a lot of people who don't want to dine out they, mm -hmm. they they want to eat outside which was limited space so they're actually doing quite well and again the food the delivery portion of it is also helping them immensely 
And the spa, which was the biggest challenge to open up because of the fact that it's exercise and the equipment is close together. And Carrie has just thought of very innovative ideas of getting people to be healthy and to exercise. And she's also doing quite well. Uh, she's at about 70% also, which is amazing considering with the limitations that were put on us by the government. And let me ask you this. I know a lot of people have asked us, when we went through this, some people said, was our staff paid? Were they not paid? Who got paid? Who didn't get paid? And I think it's important people understand from you, Thomas, that all of our employees were paid. And why don't you explain a little right. about how that happened and what they got? So from the start, nobody, nobody lost any time off. At the beginning, when we were first forced to close down totally, we, everybody, our employees, Thank God to Williams Island being very generous. Have, they have PTO time, they have vacation time, and they took that to begin with. Security was never off. They were always a, an essential employee that had to continue working. After that, even before we were approved for the PPP loan, there was the decision was made to continue paying our employees and continue paying our health plan so we'll see where it goes in the future. So basically we were taking payroll by payroll to see where we were going to wind up. And then of course we did get PPP money from the government and that covered all the employees basically until we reopened. So they never really lost anything. And I think it's important to know that before we got the money from the government, mm -hmm. we weren't sure at that point because the first tranche of money we didn't get we didn't make the deadline Correct. apart, it was just, it went as fast as it came in, others got it. Uh, but in spite of that, I think you still were paying everybody out of our monies. That is correct. And the money we got from the government was not to reimburse us for those monies. No. It was going forward money. Right? Correct. So the money is the money that we got from the, the government was distributed to the, the minute that they made their payment to us, we had 10 days to disperse the first payroll. So anything prior to that, that was all paid by Williams Island. So uh, it was very generous of Williams Island to continue paying all the employees, all their health benefits. Uh, we were in contact with all our employees. I know my staff, a lot of them were given computers so they can work at home. And uh, we did, uh, they did that. And uh, thank and, God. And what's happening now is obviously the money is gone now. We've used it all. Yes. But in spite of that, if somebody does, God forbid, get sick and has to go home, I believe you're still paying them, correct? What is the correct. policy? Correct. So if somebody, uh, if somebody calls in and they are tested positive for COVID, they get two weeks paid by us, whether they have the time or not. After the two weeks, they can apply for short-term disability, which is the benefit that Williams Island gives their employees. But so, nobody, if they have to go home, has, they don't miss anything. They don't miss anything, no. And I have somebody in my <coughs> office right now who's out. Yeah. Yes. Um, in, in your business, in your history, never. Uh, you've never seen anything like this. Never seen this, no. And it's, uh, what I find, and I mean, you work with the numbers every day, and mm -hmm. I, we, we give the reports monthly at the board meetings and at these meetings, but it isn't amazing that no one has missed a day. They've all gotten paid. All of our employees are here, and you've managed all of this. Correct. And when we do require them, let's say, to come back because certain things are opening, even if it's come back for two days and let's see how it goes, they show up. Mm -hmm. So they're very loyal employees that we have at Williams Island, which is a reflection on basically the whole management team and the board of directors. Let me ask you, going forward, mm -hmm. as things are lightening up a little bit, we still don't know what the future holds. We get a lot of questions as to the money we got, do we have to give it back, don't we give it back, and I explain at this point, until there's an audit, we don't have those answers, but why don't you explain what the policies are at this point on Correct. that money? So the money that we received, basically it's given to us as a two-year short-term loan at 1%. We have the right, well, the to ask for forgiveness. Now, we have not applied for forgiveness because our bank has not opened up its portal, and I think they're waiting for the SBA to open up that portal. But we are prepared to apply for, and I did the paperwork already, a 100% forgiveness of the loan. And we should qualify without a doubt 
we have all our backup papers, mm -hmm. so there's no reason why we shouldn't, especially the fact that we have been so generous with our employees. The loan was given basically for employees to yes. keep them off of unemployment and to keep them paid by another way that the government could pay them. So that's why, uh, and we fulfilled every aspect of that that's down great. to the... That's great. So you manage the paperwork, you manage the budgeting on right. it and such. How do you, for the people that, you know, because we work together, but explain how you run a budget and a variance report where you never know from week to week if we're opening, if we're closing, if who's going to be here. So. Correct. It's very difficult. When you run a budget, when you run a, a budget like that and when you're running forecasts like that, it is extremely difficult. So I always are on the side of being very conservative. So I assume the worst and then hope for the best. Mm -hmm. And so far, thank God, our, you know, obviously our budget that was created back in 2019 that I've inherited and I'm working with is really not a good working budget during this time of uncertainty and that our expenses are, you know, either some in some areas higher and some areas they're much lower. So we, uh, me and Steve, sat down and we created a guideline, like a forecast, to help us get through these rough times and, it and we brought it to the end of the year. And so far, we're right on track with what we're That's doing. That's great. Yes. That's great. And one of the questions, obviously, people are asking is what happens to that money at the end of the year? And that will be a board decision <clears throat> once we know what the numbers really are. Right. It's too soon right now to know, <clears throat> excuse me, because we don't know how much business we're going to do if we stay open, if we have to close. But it's important to know that whatever we have at the end, um, these things will be used for various items, primarily either reserve funding or we may do something with dues, whatever. But these are decisions that won't be made till the end of the year until we finalize our budget for next year. Right. So as much as I know we get a lot of people asking, what are we doing about this, this, we don't even know ourselves because until you go through the audit, we don't know the outcome of any of this. We don't know the outcome of it. And we don't know the percentage of the forgiveness. Let's assume that they will forgive uh, hopefully 100%, but it'll be, it could be a percentage less. And we also don't know where it takes us into really now September, October, November, and December. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it spikes again and they start restricting things, then we're back in the same place uh, where we were before. And so. also, even if that doesn't happen, but we can't still, obviously people psychologically aren't going to come back as quickly as we may be able to open it does affect the bottom line as to the volume we're doing, the profitability of what we're doing. So even so, we had money that was given to us for employees. Mm -hmm. We still have operational expenses that could exceed the revenue that we have coming in. That is correct. So we have to take all that into consideration. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we have a big pot here and a big pot here. This pot goes down because we're not doing as much as we hope to do which is understandable, as you heard, we're only doing 60-75 percent. Right, and that is correct, that is correct. So therefore, that's why we don't know where our expenses are, we don't know where our revenue is going to be, so basically we can't say, well, we have ex excess money here, so, you know, we have to be and, prudent and, with it. And the other thing is we've been asked some questions, we're doing some miscellaneous, when I say miscellaneous, it's, in other words, right now we're doing the resident gate, we're doing the front gate renovation, uh, we're doing the cafe and a little bit outside mm -hmm. and people saying where is that money coming from why is there going to be an assessment they have to understand when we put our budgets together every year we we anticipate approximately a million to a million two going into our reserve out of that million two we have a capital budget of anywhere from five to seven hundred thousand that comes out of those funds for that purpose. Mm -hmm. So explain that's where this comes from. Is it? Yeah, so this has nothing, the, the projects that we are actually doing now or that is slated to be done in the future do not pertain to operations or do not come from the PPP loan. They're basically coming from reserve monies that have been put away from the past and currently also. So that's earmarked for capital. that's earmarked for capital projects. So that reserve money which we have uh, have put away, and that's where these projects do come from. But we do not exceed what our goal is to spend for the year. Correct. So basically, what 
and what's happening now is these projects that we're doing mm -hmm. do not exceed, as Thomas said, the capital budget that we anticipated spending for the 2020 year. Correct. Because in every year, there's obviously things that have to get done that are considered capital improvements. Mm -hmm. And in that reserve funding that we get, what we try to do is take a percentage of it to build up our reserves and a percentage of it to take care of the capital improvements. But that's all within the budget and the dues that everyone pays every month. That's right. That's not additional money or that's not creating a shortfall. And by it's not means. an assessment or anything like no, that. It's just basically, all. it's the dues that they're paying. That's where it comes from. So. Tell us in your premonition of what's going to happen between now and the end of the year. How does it look like we'll finish? I think we'll finish. I think we're going to finish strong. If it continues the way we are now, we will be in uh, we will be in good shape. That's great. We'll be in good shape. We're starting our budget process now for next year, so we're doing preliminaries as uh, we speak. My office is doing preliminaries. So God, I can't believe it's budget season already. I know. And tell us, we just finished an audit. How'd we do? We did very well on our audit. Every year we do get audited by um, uh, RSM, and we actually did very well. The whole the audit was completely by um, Zoom was part of it, and also uh, via emails and text messages, etc. So they did not come in to physically audit. We had to basically send everything through Dropbox to them, the files, and it worked out fine. Great. It worked out for me. I'd like to ask you one more question. I don't want to take up too much more time, but I think it's important. Some of the people have always asked, and Stephanie gets these calls too, what is the process before we spend money for a capital improvement? And I think it's important the island understands the role of yourself, operations, and more importantly, if not as importantly, our finance committee's role. Mm -hmm. Because people don't understand the value and the importance of the finance committee. And chair is, it's being chaired by Cliff Ayn, and we have a phenomenal amount, great group of people on this committee. But explain the process. So that's important people understand that we just can't spend without we, a process. Right. So what happened is the cap, a capital item is basically introduced by the director of the department for something that he or she needs that exceeds... A, ca of a limit of five thousand dollars, and basically anything over ten thousand requires the bidding. So we need bids on anything over ten. So they first uh, come with their let's say item that they need. They go to our general manager and our vice president of operations, and they present that what they need to them. Once it's blessed by them, it comes to my desk to make sure, number one, that it fits within our budget guidelines, that we're not overspending our capital allowance for the year. It then, if it needs bids, I have to make sure that all the bids are correct, that they're, I, obviously, if it's apples to apples, and make sure everything is in line. And then it goes to finance. Now, I'm on that committee also, and finance has uh, looks at it for different reasons, obviously, with finance, as we know, there's always a lot of personal opinion in that uh, area. But they're looking at it to make sure that everything was started beforehand, that we went, that the employees of the company basically went through all the steps to make sure that it's fine, that we have all the bids in place, that there is a reason for it, and it's not just some whim that we want to spend extra money on. And it has to be a good reason. And basically then, if everything meets their criteria, they sign off on it, and it comes back to me, and it goes to the board of directors and for their approval. So in other words, because a lot of people ask, how, what is the board's role in spending? And probably when it comes to the spending, once a budget is put together on the island, the board has the least amount of input as to whether it gets spent other than after it goes from the department head to finance to the finance committee back to finance then it comes to the board for final approval right. or rejection which has happened in the past but as you see we are not involved with the budgeting we no. only can approve it and it's very important to understand that these items that come to finance they are either as part of a capital uh, budget that was put together at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. or things of emergency standpoint if an air conditioning goes or something 
But again, it's not just a whim that offers this. In other words, if no. an oven goes down, if something like that. So the reason I ask the question is because I think it's very important that the island understands the checks and balances of expenditures before it gets spent. Right, and, and that's, a, that's crucial because the same presentation of the capital item that I make to the Finance Committee, I will also be making to the Board of Directors and explaining the reason why. Like I said, the capital budget is basically made the year before. And that's when items, we look at the whole community and we say what needs to be replaced, what's getting old, what could be improved upon. But then even during the year, certain things that uh, break down and we have no choice but to replace them. But they fall into the capital item. And that's when we, it has to go through the whole process. That process takes, could take two, two months to go oh, yeah. through that whole process. And the other component of that approval process is every month there's a budget put together, not a budget, I'm sorry, a financial statement put together for that particular month, June, July, August, mm -hmm. whatever it is. That is reviewed, obviously, Thomas puts it together, then it's sent to the Finance Committee. So the other side of what the Finance Committee does is scrutinize, review the variances of the budget compared to the actual financial to the budget. Correct. And then if there's questions, mm -hmm. but more importantly, before it even gets to that Finance Committee, Thomas will look at the variance report of line item by line item of every department. And if something is more than a one, one and a half, two percent variance, he's gonna find out from the department head what happened, if it's food cost, if it's operations, if it's personnel. So you, your job is quite comprehensive. Well, now every single uh, invoice has to come through. You know, everything, we have everything on computer, our invoices, but they cannot be paid unless I sign off and have approved them. And you approve so, it against the budget. And then I approve it against the budget. Just had an issue the other day with CJ, who was purchasing grass. And I made sure that it was within, within his budget. So good, I gave good. him a call. We had to look it up. And he actually was, he did very good, CJ. So, so I guess in your opinion, you would say that there's a lot of stops and measures. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of controls regarding spending of money. That's great. And controlling money. Yes. And I think on that note, that was the reason I really wanted Thomas here to explain the process, what goes on on the island, how we handle the budgets, mm -hmm. what's going on through this insane time of crisis. But more importantly, on an ongoing basis, the stop measures that are put in place are no different today than they were January of this year no, or last the same. year. In mm -hmm. fact, they're stricter now because we've required everything to be scrutinized to the detail where we have very little variance any longer. Correct, because of the fact that we're really running on a very tight budget because of our revenue and our expenses. So, so on that note, I want to just say thank you. Thank you thank for you having for me. being with us. Thank you. I and as you can it. see, he's the cute face of the island. <laughs> but if you have any questions, his door is always open. Always and open. I will tell you, we have quite a few board members that call. Mm -hmm. He'll never not take your call. If you have questions, please call. That's right. Call me, and I'll answer them at the best of my knowledge. Well, I'll get back to you. So, I thank you very much again. Just be safe, and we will see you next week. Stephanie, I can't thank you enough for doing this. And Thomas, again, thank you for being with thank us. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for the job you do for this island. Thank you. My pleasure. Have a good afternoon.